Hi, I'm Marianne and I'm here at um, Agati Red Kite Centre in Dune to have a chat with Tom um, at their new hide and hopefully see some squirrels. We'll see how's it going with getting them used to it. Yeah, they're still a bit shy around people. Um, there's a couple of them that are getting a bit bolder with us clattering around still finishing building this, but uh, we'll see, we'll keep fingers crossed, but no promises. That's alright, no worries, let's have a look. So how's things going? It's been too long, but yeah, obviously you've got this new hide that we're now sitting in and getting everything ready to that. Um, yeah, yeah, it's been, we were getting so busy with the photography hides that uh, we were kind of looking for some kind of opportunity just to bring people down and let them see squirrels, mm. you know, without having to pay photographer rates. So we found that uh, there were squirrels down here, really close to the farm. So it just seemed like a really obvious opportunity to be able to take people down for maybe an hour before the kites and let them see them and then go up and see the kites being fed later on, make a whole afternoon of feeding. Oh, lovely wildlife afternoon. Yeah, yeah. So decided we were going to build this hide ourselves, which seemed like an easy task. And <laughs> turned out that it's taken us the best part of six months to do it. But okay, yeah. <laughs> I've been tracking the progress <laughs> on social media. Yeah, we started off, we had a really good team of volunteers that come out every week to help out, and then with successive lockdowns, it ended up at times <laughs> just being me trying to build the thing myself. It's looking good though. Yeah, well, at least now I've proven to myself that I can build a hide, so I never ever need to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and now you know how much to charge other people if they want you to build one. Oh, God, never. Actually, never. <laughs> no, <again. laughs> good to know. <laughs> Learn these things are hard, though. Yeah, we've done. Um, I had a wee release here with the SSPCA. Oh, uh, yeah. They brought out five wee um, rehab orphan squirrels. Mm -hmm. and release them in, into the woods down here. Um, so I don't know if the ones that we've been seeing are some of those ones or not, but uh, it certainly seemed to have boosted the numbers quite nicely anyway. Oh great, yeah, because they've definitely been making a comeback anyway, as we've seen over the past couple of years with the photography hired and everything. But it's good that they're in slightly different bits of the farm and the estate now as well. Yeah, it was ironic. I spent such a long time trying to find squirrels in the right patch of woodland to set up a hide in the first place and it literally now I could have put it anywhere, anywhere. and where would have had to <laughs> And they would have just come, yeah, <laughs> you yeah. didn't know they were there. It's been one of the really nice things about their revival in the area is just you do see them or see signs of them everywhere you go now which just would have been unthinkable even a few years ago. Yeah, yeah, because I know there's always been kind of the occasional sighting you know, of they're coming through because I had a quick look before coming out today just to see kind of when they first came back. And there's always been like the occasional one around June, mm. but um, it's definitely in the past kind of three or four years that the population has just gone, we're here, yeah. hello. <laughs> yeah, it just um, shows us that, you know, it's um, a bit of convective conservation work with them. It has made such a huge difference in this area and people are, yeah, seeing them in their gardens, posting it on Facebook mm. and things all the time now. It's yeah. really positive. Which is fantastic, and actually we've been getting a lot of sightings to the website as well. Um, so there's definitely a lot more than there were a few years ago, so a lot of people locally know to report them, which is good as well. Um, kind of more eyes on the ground and aware of the importance of sightings, which is great, especially as part of um, Great Scottish Squirrel Survey, where we're trying to get that like snapshot picture too. And obviously greys are really important. Have you seen many greys recently? This year has actually been our worst year for yeah. a long time for Grace here. Um, unfortunately, I suspect that with lockdown last year and less people being able to go out and kind of monitor on their trapping sites, that in the wider area there has been a bit of a population explosion yeah. with them. And um, yeah, so we've had quite a few turn up here, unfortunately. it's. Um, I think it just shows how fragile the red population is, even though it mm. seems to be increasing really well, it wouldn't take a lot to reverse that in this area. I think people seem to be getting a lot better about reporting sightings and about kind of understanding the importance of it, but mm. it's been interesting to me that still a lot of people don't seem to know about squirrel pox. Mm. Um, or really know why it is. There's a red just coming in on the back there. Oh, it's a super orange one as well. 
That's the one we had. This is what turned out this morning. I think it's quite three years ago that I first started talking to you about the idea of setting up our first idea. Mm. And now you've got what, three? Three. <laughs> this is the final one for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely done with school lives after this. Have you noticed that a lot of the time when they're coming in for hate so much they get really nudged to the next one that they're going to kind of take? Yeah. I think some of it's to do with they're really good at figuring out which nuts are good to store over winter and which ones are good to eat now. Mm. So whether there's a crack in it or something, whatever it won't be as good. Um, and therefore they'll eat that now. Whereas if they'll shake it and they'll smell it, and it's amazing what they do to find out if that nut's gonna last them throughout the winter. Cause they don't wanna bury peanuts that will just rot in the ground and won't be there in like a month's time. But it's quite incredible. We had a lot of fun with one of our photography hides where we were setting up jump perches for them. And, um, I had no idea before this that squirrels could jump so high oh, or so far. Amazing. It took us about 20 attempts uh, before we realised that from you know, the exact angle to put, to put the jumps at, where they had to jump from the perch we wanted them to go from. Rather than climb <laughs> yeah. magically. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it just shows the importance of keeping them going with it. Mm, keeping an eye out. That's why it's great um, if you guys have us with the feeder box survey that we normally do, but if you've never been able to do that over the past couple of years, um, it's more important than ever for people to report their sightings because we can't know what's going on otherwise. Um, and hopefully the Great Scottish Squirrel Survey Week um, will really help show kind of what's going on locally in many areas and we get that snapshot picture. And you never know, maybe get more sightings than we did last year. The thing is, it's to to see the red squirrels as well, it's so delighted by them. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's probably the one animal now that you think pretty much unites everyone. Yeah. Everyone likes a red squirrel. It definitely is worth it. Mm -hmm. And I know there's been kind of a few hurdles to get across as they've started kind of being more um, apparent in the land like them crossing the roads and things like that, isn't there? You've had to put up some fences by the roads to try and coax them in a rope bridge that I don't know if they ever used in the end. <laughs> the only person yeah. that ever sees them on the rope bridge is um, a lady that lives down by, um, by where we put them up. Mm -hmm. So I think they do use them, but um, we quickly learned with squirrels that they would only ever take the easiest path across the road. Most direct. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So it was our tree climber, Keith, um, who does all the climbing and um, our fitting leg rings to the raptor chicks here, um, had this genius idea that why don't you just put off the fence by the road to chicken wire fence and mm. just slow them down a bit. So it's really sad. I mean, we lost 16 squirrels on the roads here. Mm in the space for about a year. Um, and some of it was people driving too fast, but a lot of it actually is just find that squirrels so they don't have any road sense. Yeah, no, it's all. <laughs> you know, um, just really stupid things, you know, just running across the road, someone slowed down, just they started to drive again, the squirrel mm. ran out of you know, traffic. Um, and yeah, that's actually been the thing that really has helped, just fencing off those roadside strips. Mm. Um, really easy to do. It took us an afternoon to buy up the fence, and thankfully we've not had any problems yeah, since then in those areas. But yeah, again, it kind of. I think there's been quite a lot of squirrel road casualties in Dune down in the village near us, mm. and 
people have been coming to us for advice on it, and really the main thing that we've been telling people is that if you're having problems, it might be an idea not to actually be feeding them in your garden, yeah. encouraging them to cross the road. That's something that we see quite often is actually you need to look up why they're crossing the road. Yeah. And quite often it's because they're drawn to people's gardens. Um, and obviously everyone loves feeding wildlife and it's fantastic and it's great to have the squirrels in your garden. But if you're encouraging them to cross the road, that's quite tricky. Um, and yeah, you could be kind of encouraging them a bit more than you really want to, mm. um, which is a shame. I think you'll correct me if I'm wrong, but it strikes me anyway that squirrels, if they find an easy meal, they'll come back to that again yeah. and again. And <laughs> yeah. uh, most people have been really understanding about not feeding them. And obviously, it's quite, I imagine for some of them, it's quite devastating to have had squirrels in the garden mm. and then not be able to see that every day. Um, but some people are like, well, you know, it's, it's the only joy we get is seeing squirrels in the garden and have kept on going with it. And that's really problematic, I think, mm -hmm. you know, it's, um, I think we still have quite a bit of work to do on things like this about just kind of, okay, you like seeing them, you care about their conservation. Yeah. It's actually quite important not to be doing something that's harmful to that. Yeah, and a lot of people don't realise, and obviously um, in the UK, everyone loves feeding wildlife in the garden, I think. There was some statistic recently about how much food um, UK residents buy for wildlife and put in their garden, which is great and amazing. Um, but we do have to be quite careful with disease spreads and things, but also that we could be encouraging wildlife outside of things. You can also, it really should also be supplementary. Mm. Um, so maybe just feeding once a week rather than going through a whole bag of hazelnuts like um, every day or something, um, because it should they really need to get a varied diet and thankfully squirrels are quite good at that and reds are really good so people might start to see them um, kind of absent from their gardens in the autumn time because the squirrels know that they need to go and get that food that's more natural and therefore will last over winter rather than go for that easy meal in a garden and they'll probably come back to that again later so we quite often get a lot of people asking us where their squirrels have gone for a couple of months in the autumn time because they're worried that they haven't seen them but actually they're just getting a very diet and they're being quite sensible and getting themselves ready for winter mm -hmm. um, and it's actually the summer time that they struggle with food a little bit and that's kind of the best time to put a little bit of food up um, and again sometimes it's better rather than putting it in a feeder or um, like a squirrel feeder or a bird feeder just to either put it on the ground if you don't have any pets or put it on the top of a um, fence or something just to spread it around so they're not all coming to the same place yeah i think um before that squirrel came in and we've interrupted us. Uh, it's, it's still interesting to me how few people kind of still understand what, what happens when you get greys and reds in the same area. Um, yeah, it's a shame because it's, it's all the way back again. It's obviously not the grey squirrels fault but we introduced them so they're just kind of taking over and they don't fit in very well in the ecosystem we've got. Oh, exactly. Just too good at being squirrels. Exactly. We originally we didn't used to tell people that we did grey squirrel control here because mm. it was such a thorny yeah, subject. Okay. Um, but when you see the lights coming back in this number and you can actually show people what you're doing it for. Yeah. So it was grey squirrel only for um, my whole childhood. I only ever saw two red squirrels growing up here. Uh, I think it's really hard to kind of convince people that only see grey squirrels that you could have reds back if it wasn't mm -hmm. for the greys and it's the yes. only thing that's stopping it. Um, but we have more recently just started being quite honest about what we do and why. And you know, as you say, it's not the grey squirrel's fault at all. Uh, but I think most people, when you give them the choice of either quickly and as humanely as possible, culling mm -hmm. the grey squirrel or seeing the reds pushed out and left to starve or yeah. catching the pox and dwindling away. It doesn't seem like much of a choice to me.